from uh, the view of Olga Batron, who is different from, than before. Uh, yeah. wow. I've changed location, yeah. I have room, I room with the view. Yeah, yeah. The Sunset. Matthew, a new location yes. is, uh, with trees on the, on the back. <laughs> At least no change. Uh, Shen is new, so he has a wall on the back. Wow, with a clock. Uh, important people. Very Long cool. hair. So welcome, everybody. So uh, welcome, uh, Jan Poul. Uh, it's very good to have, to have you with us uh, for these new TP friends. Um, mm. Thank you again, Christine, to, to make this happening. Uh, we have the regular people almost like uh, every week. Uh, mm -hmm. Welcome to the new uh, Sean. Welcome to uh, Jeremy, um, a past uh, guest. So it's, it's good to have you. So be careful, Alberian. You have the serious guy watching what's happening <laughs> in a good way. Um, so we will start for the, um, the first part, but I can say a few things about you, Alberian. Yeah. I think the first time I meet you since it was during another eight eight IPI conference. I, I think so. Yeah. It was you doing a, a talk about FFD, obviously. At at eight IPI in France? No. I don't know. No, no, no. It was it was eight IPI, but it was not in France. Then no, no. it was. Um, where, where did we meet? Um, I, I think we, uh, we, we met uh, at eight IPI Paris in uh, nineteen. No. When no, did you I, when did you win the when did you win the prize the Charles Pignot prize? It was in Lyon in 90, 90, 98. 1998. Was that Lyon? Was it? It wasn't. Yes, uh, it was Lyon. But we met before. We need yeah. Show. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So so please um, uh, start with your with your topic. Slab yeah. on the, on the, um, on spacing. On the, we are all ready to to listen what you have to say. Yeah. About okay. Um, okay. Just let's let me see what I have for you. Oh, you are, uh, Jean Francois. Uh, can you um, can you organize or or uh, organize that I can share my screen? Because uh, at it's, the very uh, bottom, the there's a green button called share. Yes, screen. I know, but it tells uh, the host has uh, deactivated screen sharing for. Yeah, that's a new thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's so a Zoom should... update. The Zoom update changes Ooh. the thing yeah. every every week. All right. Is but it, as a host, you can change this. Yeah. I know yes, setting. I just did. How about now? You just did. Okay, then. Yeah, it's working now. Great. Okay, good. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. So, what, what do I have? I, I, I have several things for you. Um, Jean Francois. Um, oh, it is. What, what is happening here? It's the wrong, wrong thing. Um, sorry, just a second. Um, there we are. Um, I think you, uh, Jean Francois, are, are you familiar with this little booklet? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, of course, the great disadvantage to the world of type designer is now nowadays that it's only in German. And uh, a few uh, weeks ago, I found uh, this version here. And this is the same article, basically, and it's um, it's it's, it's a, uh, and it is in in German and English and and French. So, nice. are you familiar with that one? No. No. Okay, then I will send it to you <laughs> because you. it's a very nice uh, it's a very nice uh, article. It is it was the first one of the early attempts to to classify. Uh, different kinds of uh, sensor designs yeah so Very not good. only distinguish between the garald and the didon uh, but also between is that a standalone kinds. book or was it an article yes uh, you uh, probably remember a fine print on type yeah yes exactly it's in is, there. Uh, yeah yeah okay but 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 this is this is better <laughs> yeah. yeah there's only a little bit in fine print 
Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an, a kind of an extract extract from uh, from this one. So uh, I'd be happy to share this with you. Oh, this, um, oh, this in fine print. Uh, the the the, cop the quality is not very good, but it's because I scanned it in from photocopies. There was yeah. no way to do it uh, to do it better, unfortunately. But but anyway, so this uh, this was number one. So, um, so the second thing should be oh no okay let's 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 do this here. So I'm I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the design of uh, of uh, of a new typeface or, or let's say a new branch to to the family of uh, FFDIN. It is about um, FFDIN slab, and uh, probably you. Uh, are familiar with FFDIN and the original di DIN typefaces. So this is what, uh, but in case you're not really familiar or in case you want to fresh up your, your mind, uh, then uh, I'll, sh I'll show you what, uh, what everything, where everything came from. So in the, uh, when you see this Melior here, um, uh, the, the, cy the cyan uh, Letters are the original DIN uh, typeface from 1931. It was constructed on a simple grid, so five units for the X8, and um, all curves were practically made out of straight lines or circles, which all fitted onto the grid. And in 1980, we had a slightly improved version here. So uh, in 1980, we, uh, we had a, a, a new version, which was done by a draftsman. And he, uh, he introduced uh, overlaps here, which was not in the, in the first version. The, the, the dark outline is, uh, is, the, is, um, is the 1981 version. So there are some, uh, some overlaps. And the, and the, the darker version is the overlap uh, is, the, is, the, is the 1981 ver 1980 version. And then uh, this is FFDIN, which is the, dark, uh, the darker. Uh, so what I did basically in 1995 is to is to uh, make the horizontal parts a little bit thinner and uh, do the uh, the ink traps or what you call this here a little bit larger. So I added a little bit of uh, of contrast uh, and of course I uh, adjusted the spacing. But for this illustration, I decided uh, uh, to f have it on the same width because otherwise you would not notice the difference uh, that good. So the, the original version has straight lines here in the O and also here there's a straight line and the 1981 version is a, is a little bit softer in the O but uh, peculiar enough it is not in the E and uh, the 19, my uh, FF DIN version is, uh, is a little bit more, uh, uh, has a little bit more stroke and contrast compared with the 1980 version. And of course, um, I added the circular dots, which were a, a great thing to do those times. It was, it was, uh, everybody should, uh, was making uh, round dots instead of the square ones. Square ones were, were done at uh, the last, last famous type designer which did square dots was uh, Aiden Frutiger. So um, it was the big thing to do uh, to make them round. So that was, uh, that was what everything started with. And uh, when you look at this comparison, it, uh, it looks like, like, like I didn't change too much, but when you see them here, uh, without, without all the lines and the backgrounds, you see a little bit more. This is DIN from 1931, which is, uh, which is rather clumsy. It is, uh, the, the horizontals are blacker than the verticals. And this is the 1980 version, a little bit more sophisticated than this. Uh, is FFDIN medium, which matches in weight. This, this was one of the uh, design restrictions I decided to, to introduce because I want, wanted to have, uh, be able to, uh, to present it as an, as an alternative improved version. So um, then we have the issue with, um, with, uh, with the condensed weight. Uh, the condensed weight of, FFD, of the original version was called Engschrift. And it has the, the stems have the same width as the as the as the regular version. So what what happens is that when you do not when you only uh, reduce the, the width and you do not reduce the stem width, 
the typeface will look blacker. So the Engschrift is blacker than the Mittelschrift, which and, I, and this was repeated in the in the 1980 version. It's the same. It's darker than this one, and and so I decided to not do this. <laughs> But uh, so, so uh, I, I made uh, medium condensed a little bit uh, lighter, maybe a little bit too light after all, but, uh, but I'm satisfied with it and nobody ever complained. So <laughs> um, it may be interesting to see that Frutiger did the same thing as the original DIN typeface in his universe 65 and 67. So you can see here that the, the stem widths uh, of the condensed version are the same. They are identical with the stem widths in the, in the, in the bold version, causing the bold condensed to be blacker than the, than the bold version. So it is difficult to, to adjust, to have the, have the right gray value uh, for different weights on the same page. It is, uh, it is very planned. It looks sophisticated when you look at this scheme, how, um, Frutiger devised uh, uh, the weights uh, and uh, did everything according to plan. But as you can see, it, it also has its, has its merits when uh, things are exactly the same. Uh, compare this with Myriad, uh, Robert Slimbeck, a little bit later. Uh, he also um, did the stem widths of the, of the condensed version a little bit uh, thinner than, uh, than the regular version, uh, the version with the regular width in order to reach more or less the same gray value. So um, DIN may look blunt, but there's, there are still some, a, a few sophisticated uh, features in it. Uh, another thing to look at is, um, is, the, this, is the stroke weights. So this is, uh, this is my typeface URW Imperial, and here you will see the classical distribution of weight. So the left side of A is always thinner than the right side. Uh, and in M, it also changes. In U, always the, uh, the left uh, stem is thicker than the right stem, uh, although it's, it's a symmetrical character. And of course, V and, uh, and uh, Y is the same thing. So th th exactly the same thing is in the lower case. And when you look to with universe, it looks um, it looks very even, but when you mirror the characters here, you see that it is not the case. It's the same, it's the same typeface, but it's mirrored. And you can see that the, clearly see that, the, that the, now the, the left stem of A is a little bit thicker than the, than the right stem. And uh, also the M is clearly reversed and the U is the wrong way round. Um, so uh, there are subtle differences uh, in the typeface, but uh, so I, I had to decide when I did FFD medium um, uh, how how to do this. Eh? Should I should I keep the uh, the rigidity of the original typeface, or should I try to be a little bit more sophisticated? And I figured, well, uh, if I add um, more and more sophisticated features uh, and do everything the right way, I would probably end up with universe again, which was useless because universe was already there. So um, I decided to, uh, to not uh, do this uh, subtle distribution of stroke rates and keep everything identical. So you always have the feeling uh, that, uh, that it's a little bit um, tricky. You never know whether it's right or wrong. It, is, it, is a, it appears a little bit blunt uh, uh, in that way. And that's the reason why I uh, uh, kept this, uh, this kind of uh, simplicity. So now for, uh, for Din Slab. Uh, this is already a, few, a long time ago. I think five years ago that I started the first sketches and uh, ideas and looking at other typefaces and uh, well, um, the first thing is what I did is to, I looked at uh, other typefaces, uh, how, the, how black the bolts, uh, how the black the darkest weights were. I was surprised that corporate E, corporate typeface of Mercedes uh, Daimler concert is, was not really bold. Uh, Stymie uh, appeared to be the blackest, but this is also because it is, uh, it is uh, a rather condensed uh, typeface. Serifa is uh, by Frutiger is very wide. Boton, uh, French typeface, is, uh, is uh, 
a little bit uh, less, uh, <laughs> a little bit less like this, huh? <laughs> more decent. And Rockwell, uh, yeah, so um, I, I saw that uh, that in black, uh, as, as I started this, uh, uh, would probably uh, yeah, be, uh, be a rather a rather black typeface because when you add these, these heavy serifs, um, it is, uh, you add a lot of weight um, when you want, really want it to, to be a slab serif and not just uh, as in this side, uh, yeah, just um, um, heavy serifs, but not really the black ones uh, you, 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 you expect from, from, a, from an Egyptian. So yeah, adding serifs uh, is, is, a, is a thing which, which is often considered as, well, you just make some components and then and then uh, every, you have serifs everywhere. But uh, there are a lot of characters, especially when you do a really black typeface, uh, it starts to get difficult. So here is uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Daimler version here of the corporate E. It was, it was basically about adding uh, modular serifs to the, to the, to the sands, which was, which was already there. But uh, when typefaces get really black, you have to do a lot of uh, adjust, uh, adjustments. So you cannot just add uh, serifs on the inside of the, on the M because it gets, gets too tight here. And you have to think of, of do, uh, also when you, when you add, this, this, this A is, is more or less okay, I think. It doesn't have ink traps. It's a little bit blunt, but it's still quite okay. Uh, but when you add this big serif here, it's the same character, and uh, then then it's suddenly is this this part of the character is much 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 darker than the rest of the character, and and this this was in fact the limit, and this is uh, about one hundred percent more black. Uh, so, and the, and of course you want the weight to uh, you don't want characters to stand out because they are blacker than other ones. So you have to uh, make adjustments like these, or um, yeah, here uh, in the E, you cannot just hang serifs on it. Uh, they look too short. So you have to uh, yeah, find, do a lot of hassling around to take care that uh, something more decent uh, comes out. So a lot of uh, changes and not just adding serifs. You look at the, the top of the A is much wider than, uh, than it used to be before. Eh? This is almost 200% more, but it has not really become much more uh, black. Uh, Aldarian? Yeah. You know, yeah, you know the story of uh, Serifa on, um, on Glypha? Yeah. Uh, by Frutiger when uh, um, Frutiger in 77, uh, 67, I've done mm -hmm. first uh, the serifa where I added exactly uh, as you explained on your on your presentation. He mm -hmm. added serif uh, on universe to do uh, to do serifa on the on the typeface was was yep. much wider. And yep. then they decided yep. to, to, to do to, the glypha. To support serifs, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they do the glypha to correct that uh, ten years after to make it more compact. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yes, it's, it's this kind of process, and it's good that you explain with yeah. with uh, with a demonstration of of the the, the chain. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. yeah. yeah I think uh, back back in this back in those days, um, the the the, um, the 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 idea of a family was uh, was a little bit different than now. No, nowadays, it is it is. Many many designers do do a serif and a sans and a slab, and, and they all have to fit together. Yeah. Uh, and so you want you would like to have the, the to keep the x-rays the same when you when you have headlines, and then you do, uh, then you don't want uh, the typeface to to look completely different. So um, I I decided to keep the x-rays uh, of the of the of the slab the same. So I didn't want to uh, to make it uh, much much wider than uh, than uh, than the original uh, version. So, but uh, yeah, we, we we come to this point. Uh, the original idea was that uh, that I just uh, uh, took uh, FF Din at this year and added the serifs in the same weight as the as the horizontal as the horizontal weight here. So why, the, I didn't see a reason why the serifs should be thinner than uh, than the horizontal uh, strokes 
but uh, but then you see that that the serifs are, are quite huge and, and massive, and uh, the, the this 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 thing is much darker than than the original typeface. So what what I decided to do is to again reduce the, the horizontal weight by about ten percent, and you see that this this version here, this the version below is is a little bit lighter in weight than the uh, the, the original idea with the with the super heavy serifs. Uh, so what you can see here is uh, is Epertin compared with um, with the original idea of adding these uh, black serifs uh, as, as thick as the horizontal weights. And you can I hope you can see on on the screen uh, uh, that uh, that it is uh, that it's a little bit darker than the than the original Epertin. And oh, as you also see that. Probably also see that when I zoom into the H, that uh, where is it here? Yeah. Right, so um, <laughs> you have to make. Uh, this is the reason why Frutiger decided to make uh, uh, to make it a little bit wider, you know, because you you run out of space. <laughs> so again, uh, you have to make a lot of uh, adjustments. Um, so I decided to make them a little bit thinner, which results in the version below. And you can probably see that this gray value is a little bit. This, this, the gray value of this one is a little bit lighter than, uh, than the one with the, with the super heavy blonde serifs. There is a little bit more space between, uh, between the serifs. So you have a little bit more possibilities to, uh, to use it in, a, in smaller sizes. But yeah, when you, this is 96 points here, then it's okay. But here, when you want to use it a little bit smaller, then uh, it is nice that uh, it doesn't blur and clutter all the way. So that from, and then you could think uh, it was finished, but there, are, there was still a little bit more to do. This is, uh, this is original Mittelschrift and original Mittelschrift has fairly thick uh, crossbars in, in F and T, uh, which, I which, I, which were reduced in the 1980 version to, to make it a little bit less blunt. I decided to keep that feature in, the, in my version of 1995. Uh, and in the black version, we run it, ran into trouble because um, the dot on the I had to fit in the same height. And as you can see, the A senders and D senders of everything are rather short. And I wanted to keep some, some air between the dot and the I. So we lowered uh, the F and the T. Uh, uh, there is only one customer which ever uh, uh, noticed this. <laughs> In 25 years now, uh, and uh, then I sent him some uh, examples of uh, some specimens of another few other typefaces, which do, which also do not have an eye and uh, on the same width as the uh, on the same height as uh, as the X height. Uh, one of them was was of course Gill, which has uh, which has the Kayo weight uh, has, has, a, has a rounded rounded top of the eye to. Um, comfort uh, the, the dot on the eye. And the other one is, of course, Jean-Francois, a famous French typeface in which the eye does not align with, uh, it's, it, it has a super black weight. It is, uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit outdated now, so, uh, but it's Antique Olive. Antique Olive also has uh, an eye, which is a little bit uh, uh, in the black weights, of course. Huh? Uh, the, the, the things we, we, sh we are not supposed to look at too often, <laughs> uh, but it is uh, it is uh, also it has the same feature. So um, yeah, and now yeah, then what to do with uh, with um, with uh, with FFD? Here, so uh, we had we had two options basically: either keep it lower, but with so many serifs on this level, it would uh, probably look very weird that you then you really get to notice that that, that, that things are jumping you yeah? this, this is then there is probably more than one customer in 25 years who will notice this so uh, here we uh, we decided to um, uh, to keep everything as straight as, as possible also figuring that uh, uh, a typeface like uh, like this is probably more headline usage uh, used in larger sizes than uh, than original uh, effect in black. So we just decided to keep them exactly the same width. But, but, but because we make this a little bit thinner, it is not as blunt as the original DIN typeface was here. This is, uh, here you can see that it's rather black. And here 
it is, I think, more or less okay. So, but still we have a lot of sheriffs uh, and what about, what, what about to do them? So originally we added sheriffs um, in this, which, which were all um, possibly identical. They all have the same uh, length. Just, um, and this causes again other problems because uh, when you have um, combinations such as, as this one here, there's a, a rather large gap between uh, right here uh, between between D and U, and uh, here uh, you have also have uh, have a larger gap. So uh, so what you can do is you can reduce uh, the the side bearings here on the end, and maybe you can also add a little bit more uh, space uh, on the on the right side bearing. So this is so uh, here we have. Um, almost no correction or no correction maybe i just maybe here's two units no these are all these are all the same but we have we have a very uneven uh distribution of weight within the words and also the between curved uh characters here now normally you have the sheriffs here so they fill up the space but what about what to do about this this looks even bigger here than this one here because i added this serif so here Arab serifs cause um, white space to disappear, and here this, the same serif uh, causes the, the white space to get much bigger than uh, than before. So again, uh, uh, we did some uh, some tricks, and uh, we we decided to to adjust uh, the length of the serifs here. So these serifs are a little bit shorter, and these serifs are, are a little bit longer. Um, so that the difference between between the distances of the shares, which are also a feature in in, uh, in headline sizes, uh, becomes a little bit a little bit smaller. It is the difference is subtle, but it's still there. Uh, so now, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, what else did we do? Uh, now this is the the final version. Yeah, as it is uh, still. The spacing and the length of the serif is still the same. So what we did is uh, we we increased the side bearings here, and we also increased the length of the serifs. And on this side, we reduced the length of the serif, and we also reduced uh, the side bearings. So it is a little bit of tricks everywhere, but it leads to uh, at least we hope so that uh, to a typeface of, of a little bit more even weight. And in the end, we also reduced. Um, uh, the side bearings on the on the curved characters because they still tend to take um, um, yeah to cause uh, bigger white spaces and and in the end we will we will also uh, there's there's no kerning in this example here it's too old for kerning <laughs> so uh, we will also be able to to close these gaps uh, and things like this here you cannot fix this by spacing you have to do it uh, with is a little bit of uh, of kerning, so a lot of adjustments to be made. This is uh, this is what we what we did. Um, so here we originally had a serif length of 26, 26, 26, 26, everywhere the same. Uh, excuse me for using Dutch. <laughs> this is this is spacing in Dutch, and this is serif length. So, and this is the original. Um, oh, that is this, no, this, yeah, this spacing here, and this is the length of the serifs. They are all. 64, and uh, the spacing is all the side bearings are always 26 at the, the verticals, and of course measured from the serif, and not from the uh, center here. So what we did is uh, is we reduced the side bearings here with minus six, minus six at the curves, plus four on when we have two serifs, uh, minus four when we have only one serif, uh, resulting in uh, this one here. So here you have the reduced serif lengths uh, in particular cases and, and reduced uh, side bearings uh, in at the curve. So this is, um, uh, yeah, this is what in the end results in, in the difference between these two. <laughs> this is the upper one uh, with, um, with no adjustments of, uh, of, of, of spacing and uh, and length, and this is the version with um, 
adjustments in, uh, in serif lengths and side bearings, but still without kernel. <laughs> so uh, next year, uh, I, can <laughs> I can show you the, uh, the version with, uh, with kernel. I think uh, there maybe the E is uh, is a little bit wide, but I think it's uh, it's it's uh, it's it's a it's a small improvement from uh, from here to there. So this is uh, I'm already uh, over uh, time, and um, I see. So uh, yeah, when somebody has a question, then uh, yeah, I have I have just was one question about the R because the R, R yes, I think. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's very <laughs> angular. It's not so very angular, because, very because of the slab, the slab serif. Yeah. Uh, this part seems very hard when it, uh, on some serif it's, a, it's look okay. So yeah. uh, you have a discussion about how to make the the F uh, bar in different yeah. position for the slab serif. What is mm. your, what 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 do you think about this R on what to do or what not to change? Uh, yeah. What is your actual uh, internal discussion about that? Yeah, we, have, we had a discussion. On, of course, we had some. And um, a lot of things you can see here are, can be solved with kerning or a little bit adjustment of the spacing. But it will still be uh, a little bit itchy. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, completely sure yet. Uh, maybe, we, maybe we will change the R. That's, but 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 it's uh, but it's the, it is also on the other one on the, on the other hand this is also a feature yeah? you can see that here the the, the, the diagonal cutting yes. of uh, of the strokes is is apparent in, in E and in A and it's something which distinguishes uh, DIN from a lot of other typefaces especially this forty five degrees angle um, so maybe it's also a little bit too slick to uh, to to just uh, make it um, make it make it uh, vertical. Uh, maybe we can maybe we can vote on this. Um, <laughs> who who would? Uh, I, I'll switch to the to the gallery uh, view, so I can see you all. I, I um, stop the screen sharing now. So who would be in favor of the of keeping the the R with the diagonal angle? And who would be in favor of the second question is who would be in favor of, of cutting it off uh, decently in the in vertical way? So your votes, please, for the for the angular version. Expert committee. A angular version is one, two. It's it's two, three. Uh, Jean Francois is also in favor of the angular. Who is in favor of the of the vertical cut? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, vertical. So, uh, also vertical. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, vertical. Yeah, vertical. vertical. Okay, so that's one less for the diagonal, and uh, we have one. I think um, the, the maths that are set up in it, um, it would be happy to be vertical. Yeah. Um, the, optically, the 45, it looks steeper on the R. Yes, it, it does. Because yeah. it reaches, it's a weird thing. Uh, um, to be honest, none of these angles is 45 degrees. Well, no. <laughs> they all are. But if you made it I a lot, it on all of them. <laughs> then it would look really weird. So it'd either be vertical. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, th I think it would be happy. I don't, even though it's different to what's happening in DIN. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there yeah. is another way to do it. It's to add um, to add um, alternate. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We have so many. <laughs> Vanilla on chocolate, not you. You have the choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can take the both. On even yeah. you can do even more. You can have yeah. a open type feature to have the straight yeah, yeah, one. Of course, we have a lot of alternates. Uh, or the diagonal one in front of, of E or O. Yeah, yeah you yeah, can yeah, have yeah. both, but it's not yeah, very yeah. German way. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just you know the strange thing is that Eric Spiekerman. Uh, I, I, the, 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 on the one side, he was always advocating design is about making decisions. So, uh, no, that which means uh, no alternates. <laughs> but always he encar kept encouraging font font designers to include uh, alternate versions. So, here I am, <laughs> okay. confused forever. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Um, uh, we have question now. Well, oh, um, I typed in something. The, um, yeah. With um, the, the lower x height to the I and I presume the J, 
and yeah. the F and the T. Um, it may be a bit of a, an odd thing to say nowadays or ask now, um, but how does that work in hinting? In thin? At, at some point, does it then jump quite a lot down? Where? Well, what? Sorry? Well, at, the, at small sizes and sort of the yeah. lower resolution as opposed to um, retina, how does it, how does it mean, what happens visually um, along the X height when it, in hinting? How do you hint those? Mm. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, do, I do not do hinting. Oh. That's... Uh, uh, Photoshop was very good at, at hinting, so I was uh, I always I was very pleased that they uh, that they took over this uh, this job. Uh, I have done several typefaces, but Din is the only one which has this funny feature. So I never uh, ran in, ran ran into the question of how to handle this this again. This, uh, were you happy to? Uh, I, th I think that for, for, for small sizes, uh, one should rather uh, try to keep the X8, but uh, uh, also it's, it's, a, it's kind of a problem because there is a no, lot no, of I things understand. to. Uh, yeah. um, here. How, how have you done the, the Cap H, the Maltese Bard H? Sorry? How, how have you done the Maltese Cap Bard H? Well, what's that again? It's a, oh, it's a, ah Maltese. Yes, of course. Oh yes, uh, we cheated. <laughs> yeah. On the outside. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's somewhere here. Um, I can sh uh, just a second. Uh, I'll switch to uh, to um, bin slab so we can look for the Maltese H. Uh, so this is an older version. It doesn't have the interpolations wow. yet. Um, um, so yeah, this is probably what you what you refer yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, right? okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, this is what we did. We we lowered uh, the bar uh, in, yeah. in H as, so to to be able to introduce this this uh, number two here. Yeah. So maybe it's a little bit. So. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's see. So it's always a, a nice one. Yeah. It's, um, it's a little bit lower, but not yeah. that much. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. they get funny. Yeah. Yeah. I've yeah. seen some um, solutions where. A little you bit. Just add it to the outside. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, but uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I wouldn't do this to the neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I want to keep uh, stay friends with them. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the bars are the bars. Are, this, this is in in the in the complete typeface. There are no bars which exceed the shared length. No. Uh, so the probably here. Uh, yeah, this this guy here. It's uh, this is uh, maximum. No? It, it will never uh, be exceed. It will never exceed the serif lengths. But uh, it but uh, when it when it but they try to get longer, you know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The way you model the the curves, the the, vert the curve coming down, say on the D. Do you have very small straights? in there or is it pure yes okay yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there is a small straight line which which is which is bigger um, than hmm? it's bigger than i thought are the dots what are the dots yeah it's bigger than i thought i, I thought it'd be less yeah 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 yeah, yeah. um i i uh, originally we we, we 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 gave a lot of characters. Uh, we allowed them to be a lot, a, a little bit uh, more curved than the original version. But we decided. I de I decided to 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 keep it in um, to not do this with the D to keep it straight. It's, it's um, <laughs> yeah. There have to be some. Uh, din Din has to hurt in some way. 
<laughs> because it is an still it has to look like an engineer's typeface. So uh, yeah, you cannot add too much fancy things. Maybe you know, this is already rather soft here, huh? and I didn't want to uh, to, get, to to have the D. Uh, oh yes, there's still some rubbish in this one here. This curling pair which shouldn't be there at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we didn't uh, do curling yet. It's uh, up for next next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Any more very questions? Nice. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, um, Alberian. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, we we jump into the question uh, part of the part two. You're you're okay with that? So I will uh, copy past the question on the chat, but also ask oh, you. Yeah. Um, um, as you um, discussing with you, so the first question is about uh, it's about um, uh, about the past. So you worked at Scan Graphic in the in the first year, uh, and then uh, URW, and you publish uh, typeface at with font fonts. So of this period, what what we the good lessons we we can retain retain from the nineties about working in large uh, um, foundry as it was at the time. Mm -hmm. And at, the moment, at this moment, there was no uh, independent foundries in early 90s, mm -hmm. or very, very few, not at the level of today, yeah. not at the level of today. But yeah. oh, it was to work at Scan Graphic or uh, URW, or even in early days of, of font fonts, working as a designer sending your, your work for them uh, compared to today. Yeah, what you can say to young generation about this period? <laughs> Ooh, uh, what can I say? Uh, yeah, a lot of things has, uh, have changed, of course, but uh, you still have to be able to, uh, to design good curves, you know? <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, um, when, I, when I started to work, um, I didn't have a computer on my desk. It took about four years, uh, nay, three years before I had my first computer on my own desk. And the, the first computer I had on my desk was a, was a, was a, a Macintosh SE30 or something, or a Mac Plus, I, I, I don't remember, or a classic, um, yeah, the, the, small, the, small, the small one with small screen. And I didn't use it for, for typeface design, I used it for, uh, for writing, uh, writing letters. <laughs> uh, which or, or writing faxes no? I would go to the printer and have it printed and then go to the lady downstairs who, who was operating the fax machine and uh, she uh, faxed my my messages with, uh, yeah so the first computer I had was not not for doing typefaces but we next door uh, we had fax uh, computers with we had about I think four or five workstations with uh, uh, nine, I think, 17-inch grayscale monitors, which were by then uh, revolutionary. <laughs> so there was no color, and and then we had nine. We had a Macintosh 2 FX with a 19-inch screen uh, grayscale monitor, mm -hmm. and that that was basically used to uh, to to run uh, Icarus M to convert uh, both, uh, we generated Bezier curves from Icarus and added screen fronts on Icarus and then they were married all together, uh, together with another file which, uh, in which the kerning was stored uh, and the naming conventions were, were, were written in. So we had about five, five files open at the same time, which was a, t a total revolution for people from the URW because opening five files and taking data from from them to cook uh, uh, a Mac uh, PostScript font was uh, uh, they, they never had uh, <laughs> managed that much data uh, at one time uh, until until we did it and um, and that was based in, and uh, so so um, yeah. Um, I, we, we, we got printouts uh, on photo, uh, photo setting equipment, which was a CRT machine, which had a resolution of 1,000 lines per centimeter. And uh, that's how we looked at uh, on Barrett's paper. 
So that's how we judged uh, typefaces. And then we marked them all red. <laughs> and then we gave them back to the ladies next door and did, they keyed in the corrections. So that was, it took a long time before I, I must, the, the first time I actually myself worked, really worked on a typeface on screen was 1995 because UOW went bankrupt and uh, we were all sent home and uh, everybody bought, bought a Macintosh <laughs> and uh, tried to do his best. Huh? Yeah. That's, uh, so uh, even at URW, I, I had, uh, we, we had people which, which worked on typefaces and I was supposed to, to, to check uh, what they did and control and supervise and uh, organize and uh, things like that. They, they hired me for that. They didn't hire me as a designer, but uh, they, they saw that we were capable of, of converting 1000 headline typefaces from Icarus to Postscript. And, and put them on the market. We were not really successful because the marketing department did not really want have a clue of how to sell typefaces. But um, um, they themselves uh, didn't have this library. They had 3,000 typefaces, but they were not able to, uh, uh, at that time, it was difficult for them to, to convert this all and, and put it into a product which would be, could be sold on the market. So that's why they hired uh, someone like me and uh, yeah. So it, it took a long time before I, <laughs> I, I came back to, to designing things uh, myself. What, what was your, your, your job on position at Scan Graphic? Well, as, as, I started as, a, as an assistant. Uh, we had a type director, Volker Kuster, who designed Today's Sense Serif. So it's also still available. Uh, and after one and a half year, he got a better job. <laughs> He, he applied for a job as a professor of typeface design in Hamburg, and then, uh, and then, um, uh, half a year before, I already had asked uh, Jelle Bosma to join me because we had to convert the library to PostScript, and uh, Jelle was much more into computers than than I was. So, and Volker Kuster was 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 basically uh, a, a classical designer which could draw draw and and correct, but he was not involved in, uh, in computer technology. So uh, we, we had to find uh, somebody like Jelle Bosma to, uh, to, do, the, to do the technical uh, st stuff. And um, yeah, and then uh, Volker went to, uh, uh, to, for his job as professor and then Holthusen, uh, which was the director of the company, then uh, the, the manager asked me if I, could, if I could take over the job. So then I became a type director. And then, um, yeah, at URW I, I got, basically the same job, uh, but a little bit more bigger teams. That, um, yeah. But to be, a, to be a, the type, what, what does it mean to be the type director in, a, in an old foundry uh, like a scan graphic at the time? Because you say that you begin to draw by yourself on the screen, not before uh, almost mid nineties, but to be at the end of eighties, early nineties at scan graphic type director, it was like, Looking at printout and do some yeah. some check marks on it, yeah, or, or to do a, to do a manual about how to use or to do the, the the catalogs or to decide. Do you have to decide which typeface scan graphic have to publish or remove or what was? Yeah, the... yeah. Uh, it was basically decided by uh, by uh, by uh, Holthusen was uh, was the was the manager and he he uh, he was. Uh, in fact, he was an industrial designer, but he was uh, also very keen at typefaces. You could put a type typeface on the table and he would know uh, which one it was. Huh? He, he was, wouldn't need to think uh, that long. So he, he was very good at, uh, at, uh, at, looking, at uh, looking at typefaces. And uh, uh, so it was basically uh, him and, and of course the customers. The customers decided and more or less what, what we were doing because they said, well, we, we, uh, we can buy uh, scan graphic machines, but uh, we want to have uh, this and that Unica or, or Simon Chinigaramont or, or whatever it was. Uh, they, they said, well, we have one big customer and they always use this and that. And uh, we won't buy the machine when the typeface is not available on the machine. <coughs> because the systems were proprietary and uh, you could only mm -hmm. use scan graphic fonts on a scan graphic machine. The same as 
you could only use monotype fonts on a monotype machine, virtual fonts on a virtual machine. So that it was basically the bigger customers dictating us to to digitize uh, Janson or whatever it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, we um, uh, we had to convert everything to PostScript, and then we went. Uh, I, I calculated which fonts were had were were selling better and which ones were not selling. So then we started with the best sellers, and and so it was basically the same as as all companies. So you you start with the with the best sellers first. That's and then you make mistakes, and then over the years you, you improve. And the ones that don't get sold are better than the ones uh, than the best sellers. And technically, that's why Helvetica is always a mess, and why it is now renovated the, the fourth time, I guess, or the fifth times. I don't know. It's yeah, it's it's always the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, um, so the second question it's about um, it's about uh, uh, influence of uh, of of your your moment at type media so i put that on the on the on the chat it's uh, so you you are probably the first class or the second class i don't know um, of type media students with joel bosma or maybe the class after him so to to learn to learn your craft with writing on the back as a as a as a tool to understand uh, typeface design Mm -hmm. um, um, so, how you feel about uh, using calligraphy or writing as a as a tool to teach people how to design typeface or not? Mm -hmm. Does it's good to use writing or not? Because uh, in your in your typeface design, we are not seeing too much of influence mm -hmm. of you know uh, writing. Um, um, feelings on on the way you design typeface. It seems you. You, you, you disconnect the two things clearly. So what is your point of view about that? Yeah, I think uh, yeah, well, I have some typefaces, uh, corporate typefaces, which, which uh, show a little bit more, uh, um, uh, if you like, uh, calligraphy influence. So just a second, I can show you what I, um, um, how, how I teach. <laughs> This is just very short. Um, I have to download these images. It is just a few seconds. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is here and there. And now we have this here. And I can open it and share my screen. And then we can see what, what I actually do this, these weeks. In, in times of Corona, <laughs> um, so I have to get back to my Zoom screen and then we will be able to take a look at it. Where's my Zoom screen? Hmm. Right, this is a small laptop with a lot of, yeah. ah, yeah, okay, there we are, uh, here, yeah. so, so this is this is what I'm teaching. <laughs> this is uh, I start with uh, with uh, with textura here. Um, so this is what I write uh, and show my uh, my students and tell them uh, about uh, this is what I use to 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 to, to tell them about the rhythm and about spacing, how to take care that this the hole between uh, the the black the white space between C and H is not too big that you can connect the characters and whatever it is. Um, uh, let's see, yeah, that's the same image, I made a mistake, sorry, <laughs> um, things like this, eh? so how to, how to uh, adjust the form of R, we talked about R, R. you see in Textura we have the same issue, eh? how, to, how to do uh, this part of the character that it does not create too much of a gap between, um, between letters, how to take care that, uh, that strokes do not clutter uh, by uh, yeah this is uh, so I think uh, the basic things uh, like uh, uh, how to how to, uh, to 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 be able to 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 tell why uh, why 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 the distribution of weights why is the left side of the 
of the V, always the thicker one on, on the right side. No, there's, no, there's no optical reason for it. This is just uh, because it's from writing. So this is, for me, it's the only version, the only way to, to understand um, why mm -hmm. characters are, are, are characters, no? why, 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 why letters are things and not, uh, not pictures of things as to speak with, uh, with Eric Gill and, uh, and Johnson. So, and it also it is enables me to, to, to explain that things are modular. Eh? It is, you can get from Textura to, to, to a Roman typeface by uh, leaving everything, leaving the straight part, by rounding the straight parts, and then you get, you get from here to there. So it is, it is <laughs> it's, um, there's nothing more and nothing less. So uh, the, my my biggest problem is is to 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 show people how to write. So this is how I teach. Uh, this is the this is my computer. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, this is the computer of my employee. <laughs> but Friday she is not working in the office. Uh, so I'm sitting. Uh, my my place is here, and uh, then I take the empty space because my my desk is always full with paper. <laughs> so this is then uh, she, she. But she is very. Um, uh, works very uh, disciplined and does not have too much paper on the disc. So uh, I use a USB camera and then, uh, well, you know this stuff and then I can write here actually uh, and, uh, and uh, show them uh, what to do. And what, what is the percentage of your time uh, teaching on uh, working on your own type design project or the, the part between uh, teaching on, um, on the rest of life? Uh, what is the percentage? Ah, in yeah. Uh, I teach on Fridays. Okay. Yeah, okay. from nine to from nine to five. <laughs> it's a nine to five job. Yeah. yeah. It's a long and uh, so, but I have to I have to prepare a little bit. Uh, so yes. maybe I and, and especially now uh, everything is online. So uh, it takes me one day to uh, it takes it takes me two days per week. Uh, this teaching, one yeah. day for preparation and yes. afterwards and uh, uploading the instructions and things like that. And one day of, uh, of actually teaching. Yeah, and, and the rest is uh, a lot of other stuff, but uh, I am very happy to have uh, uh, an assistant which helps me <laughs> because otherwise I wouldn't be able to, uh, to, uh, to do uh, everything I, I would like to do. <laughs> It's just uh, working on typefaces is very, very tedious. It's, uh, you have to be very patient and uh, uh, yeah, it's, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy that I'm not, not doing this uh, all by myself. <laughs> yeah. So the next question is it's about, um, 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 so most of the, most of the typeface we know are typeface you made for someone else. Mm -hmm. So, uh, between the typeface you, you've made for, for front front or, or custom front for clients, corporate typeface, do you have some typeface who came from, um, from your mind? I mean, yeah. not, not from something yeah. uh, that people um, ask you to or suggest you to do? Yes, but I'm not sure. This is only my laptop and I'm not in my office, so I don't know. No, no, I don't ask you to, uh, to uh, especially share on to, to prove what you say. You, you yeah. do what you want, but... Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I did some... Um, I did corporate typefaces for, for gas stations uh, in Germany, and they, they are... Uh, and for uh, whatever... It, uh, what, what, for an agency to have them to have it as their corporate typefaces, and they are, but I... Uh, maybe... maybe but do, do you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There is one. There is one here. This is. Uh, uh, so do you initiate a personal project sometime? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if this is what. Uh, yeah, I can. I can show you two things. I did. Did just happen to be here on my on my laptop, which. Uh, there are probably a leftover from some presentation, but I think it is interesting to see. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, just change the screen, and then we're there. Uh, yeah, and 
this one here. So there we are. Uh, oops. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. So this is one. Cool. Not uh, not geometric. <laughs> I think, but, uh, yeah. 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 It's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of a humanist sense. It had to look a little bit squarish because yeah. the, the, the agency involved was the, this is that it is the uh, uh, it's a corporate typeface for a foreign agency. So um, yeah. they wanted to uh, to look a bit, a bit technical because they see themselves as uh, yeah. 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 Uh, there is some uh, similarities in, in terms of category of typeface as the one uh, by uh, Jeremy Tankart who done um, for Microsoft. Oh, really? <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's it's not the same at all. But uh, there is some yeah, similar kind of um, direction. Okay. Yeah. So which which characters are familiar? Yes. Which characters are familiar, Jeremy? <laughs> Jeremy is not here anymore. He just oh. left. Uh, oh. What is his typeface? It's, uh, it's Corbel, the typeface name Corbel. Corbel? Yeah, oh. Corbel have seen it. Yeah. It's not the same, but it's very strict like this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, it's a little bit, yeah. It's, it's a little bit, bit uh, less wide, I think, Corbel. Yeah, yeah, for sure. A yeah, little it, bit rounder. Yes, it's very different, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but okay. I can see the point. This, this, uh, when you do an A like this, there are, you have uh, companions, huh? <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah. So, okay. um, uh, so um, uh, the next question is about the use of, of your own typeface. So, there is, so, you know, the typical thing about type designer is they, they, they see the typeface in use by, by graphic designer. Mm -hmm. So, the question is about that. Um, could you mention some execution that surprised that you the most, or situation where there was uh, where the typeface are strictly used as you expected? Mm -hmm. So, what is an unexpected use of the typeface you you made, especially FFD? Expected use? Who? Or non-expected use? Uh, uh, non the way you you take the question. Okay, so you are asking for a, for a, ah, yeah, I see, I, I have to read it from the screen again. As, yeah. a, as a designer of popular one of the, you probably saw them unexpected situations. Could you mention some execution that surprised most? Cool, yeah. Um, I, I just, just a few weeks ago, I got uh, some photographs from, from Jörg Hemker, which is a colleague here in, uh, in Hamburg. He did FF, FF Zwo and FF Nord. FF North is based on, uh, on, on the transport, the English transport typeface. So it's a little bit like FFDIN or a little bit like uh, interstate, the same idea to take a transportation signage typeface and convert it to, into something decent, <laughs> which, which you can actually use for other purposes. So, and here he was in Oslo, in the, the capital of, uh, uh, of, uh, of Norway, and he was in the, in the, in the, in the metro and he made some pictures of, uh, of the metro stations because in Oslo they are very, very, uh, they are famous for the architecture. And the funny thing was that, uh, that uh, FFDIN is used for the signage there. And a few years ago, um, uh, um, a designer um, made a book about traffic typefaces and he, he also wanted to include DIN and of course FFDIN and I think we had Centre Pompidou uh, signage in uh, uh, in, uh, uh, I think we, we, we wanted to include this and, uh, and, then, he, and then they asked from, well, well this, you know, DIN is a traffic typeface, but is there any other signage system uh, in the world uh, for, for public transportation, which is using FF DIN? And uh, I, I, uh, I, I wasn't aware, I, I said, no, I, I'm, I'm not aware of this. I don't think there is any, anybody is using FFDIN as a traffic typeface, although I, I designed it as an improved version, you can say, yeah? So, but nobody, uh, they, they, everybody uses other things. But Oslo seems to be the, the, the one 
and only <laughs> public transportation system in the world uh, known to me uh, uh, which is using effort so this was that was uh, that was a recent surprise and yes. then and the and uh, the other one was of course Centre Pompidou yeah. because yeah. it because it is French <laughs> and uh, I never expected, uh, uh, and especially when you look at history, you, you, you wouldn't expect that in the 1950s or in the 1960s, uh, a French designer would ever use a German typeface for a national symbol as, as the Centre Pompidou is. It even bears the name of the president. So <laughs> how can you use a German rigid uh, faces from yeah. the 1930s <laughs> for for a beautiful uh, building as an elegant building as as the Centre Pompidou so i was i was completely surprised when i uh, when i saw this I, I didn't know it i went there and i was i thought what is this going on here so yeah, was, but, but but the, the, the building was done by uh, Renzo Piano who is italian yeah. on, the, on the identity the renovation of the identity was done by a german born Swiss German born designer. So we all know him, some, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So there are some good reasons that yeah. Europe is there. And so people from, from, from all over Europe to design yeah. things. So there is yeah. always a good reason. Yeah, good reason. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think, a, yeah, 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 please, please, please. I, I remember a discussion. Um, I, I, maybe you were also, always also involved in that because there were also French designers who were a little bit, a little bit dis disappointed because the, before the new signage came with FFD, there was a renovation project going on in the Centre Pompidou and there was a temporary, temporary signage system. And the guys who did the temporary signage during the renovation of the building they had, they took um, they told me the story, in fact, and they told me that that they used um, um, uh, something. Uh, I, th I think um, uh, they took the typeface from, from one of the typefaces used for car plates in in France, or yes. maybe they used Signal. The, you know the, the signage typeface in France, so, something like this, and this was done for the temporary signage. So uh, they were not. They were not. Uh, not uh, they, they were. They were the guys which were. were which were. Yeah, it not was done by uh, by Grappus, by Pierre Bernard, Atelier de ah. yes, de création ah. graphique Grappus. So yeah. it was exactly as you say. Yes. So yeah. It was very uh, geometrical, but in certain way like Dean in certain way, but a yeah. different take. But it was the same kind of concept. Modularity yeah. and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It fits. It's quite. It fits quite well. Yeah. 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 yeah, and uh, Grafus is, of course, one of the, uh, I, I don't know how, what, what it is now, but uh, in those days, Grafus was, was one of the, the yeah. agencies in, in Paris, right? Yeah, I have a, a very small, uh, in parentheses, a very small story about Le Monde. When they, they asked me to do the typeface, we have ah, to do the yeah. license, and they, they wanted to, to avoid that the typeface will be used in the future by a publication uh, showing a nude woman. That was the main problem for them. They can say, yeah, you can use Le Monde for everything in the future, but not for Playboy on such ah. literature. <laughs> so that was the most problematic. So it was this thing yeah. on extreme, ra extreme rights. So Le Pen in France, yeah. no, you don't have the, 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 the right to use the typeface on Playboy. Yeah. No, we don't. But I say you are not able to. But what can you do? Eh? Yeah. No, it's not yeah. possible. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it is very surprising where typefaces turn up. Yeah, but yeah. You, yeah, yeah. So the next question is uh, it's about the market. Uh, yeah. um, so um, so the next type, the next question is about uh, what is the best way to publish a typeface today. Do you launch your own oh. foundry or boutique, or mm. do you think uh, do you think it's better to send it to a small type foundry with certain kind of reputation expertise, mm. or do you think it's better to to give it uh, to send it to monotype or mm. font font or whatever, or or just to send an open source with Google or or mm. equivalent to it, or, yeah. or even another idea? Yeah. yeah, what is your recommendation? Difficult question. <laughs> I think yeah. when you when uh, when you when you really need the money, 
<laughs> then you should go to to and and you, and, uh, and you have a lar larger family, um, which for which, uh, no, yeah, okay. When 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 you need when you need the money, you can sell something to Google because then you know exactly how much money you get. Uh, and then you can think, okay, I worked uh, so and so many months uh, and I get this money and is it okay for me right now, the thing to do, that, that's, that should be okay. But the disadvantage uh, is, um, it's the only time you get money for the typeface. You will never get anything more <laughs> because uh, when it comes to extensions of the typeface, when it comes to Cyrillic or, or, or Greek, anything you don't do yourself at the beginning, and when you don't make a contract on it, uh, Google will find other designers to extend you, basically your, your family. You, you sell it and you have no rights left on it. The only thing you can do is that you can make corporate versions of your home typeface, no, that, because that's possible. So you can do a, a Google, you can do a, a sans serif typeface for Google, and then you can add, you can do a slab, slab version of the same typeface and sell it as a corporate font. Uh, and Google will probably not be able to do uh, anything against it because it's open source. Uh, no, um, so there are, there are ways to cope with this, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a, a one-time fee. So when you think that, uh, that you have design which, which, uh, which really stands out as a design and would fit to a, to a, to, to a lot of customers and, uh, and when you see that, that you're working on ideas which are caught up by, 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 by other designers, when you're ahead of a trend maybe, then it would be a good idea to, to go to font stand or to a type network or or to a, to a foundry of which you know that it fits in their collection. So they will do a lot of, a small foundry will do a lot of more publicity for a new typeface of which they think that is the right one for them than a company like Monotype because uh, you, you, you see what, what they do. It's uh, you, uh, for when your typefaces are, are new and released, then it's 90% off and uh, <laughs> And some, pop, some people will buy it because it is there and because it is for free. Uh, but a, a small number of people will do things with this typeface which, which, which expose it and which shows everybody this is the new thing. So it, um, and then uh, maybe in the beginning you will have some interesting sales, but yeah, half a year later or maybe two years later, there are so many new designs coming up and up and up and up and up and up. And look at my fonts. There's ten thousands of typefaces, and new typefaces are not getting noticed after after two years. It's over. Um, so, so you uh, it's a difficult that, story. So, do you think that uh, okay, if you go with a large distributor like Monotype on 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 other like that, mm -hmm. uh, the, the typeface will disappear because there is too much. But do you think that yeah. uh, this, if you go with a smaller but not so small because you refer to type networks model, yeah. for example. Yeah. Not so small, the typeface will mm -hmm. not disappear after two years. The typeface is still there. You sell I think it, so. yeah. but it's still All, a, all you have to do is a, a sort, of sort of combination that you, you have your own foundry, uh, with make, best to do with, you, you join with other designers. Uh, you, you do a foundry with, let's say, it, uh, two, three, four people. Uh, and then, uh, and then you uh, you use uh, my fonts uh, and the monotype websites to for distribution. But uh, you have to be prepared to do a lot of marketing yourself too, because because they are not uh, not doing prob probably doing not not the same thing as you would be able to do yourself, because when you do something on marketing. Uh, then, then you would do it uh, with a lot of effort and a lot of spirit and a lot of joy and, and whatever it is. Uh, um, and, and a large company with, with 100,000 typefaces in the library, how much time does the marketing team have for your typeface in a year? It, yeah. it is a very, you divide 20 people worldwide or maybe 30 through 100,000. 
and that's what's left over for your design and that's not much <laughs> so you have to um, uh, but when you have, when you on the on the other end, which when you've done a design of, uh, which is not not that really original, no? but because you made it as a student, and it was interesting to do, and it was a lot of fun. But when you look at it, well, it will probably never sell. No? <laughs> and, and and no matter what you do, out how how loud you yell on the street about this, uh, probably it will will still be uh, it will not really really do anything. And then you can of course. Uh, let's say, uh, put it on, on my fonts because occasionally people will buy it, actually. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, because why not? Are, uh, <laughs> uh, so it will be the last question because you have yeah. done two... Yeah, we are running out of time. Full sensory. Yeah. Uh, what is a good, the, good, the best characteristic for a sensory ah. to be legible? Oh, <laughs> uh, on every size, every support. What, what is it? Oh, oh, it should be. It should be geometrical, like a grotesque, like a, a humanist. What is the point? Uh, I, I will explain a little bit more the question. Because, yeah. you know, in the 90s, where we were young, uh, the trend was to do uh, humanist on serif, open yeah. counters, and things like that. And, mm -hmm. and everyone said at the time, yes. Uh, typeface are more legible or whatever because it's humanist and it's open counter or something like that. Yeah, and yeah. today, most of the typeface are like grotesque. Mm -hmm. And the same people say, yes, my grotesque is more legible than you, but it's grotesque. And it's the most illegible fonts from the 90s, the grotesque thing. Yeah. But people now think that grotesque are more legible. So what, yes, <laughs> where is the truth? Uh, the truth is in uh, in optics, so, so it's, yeah. Explain to us. Yeah, explain yeah to us. it is. Uh, I, I, sh I basically it is. Uh, it is here. Huh? Um, I, I think that the article which uh, which, uh, which I showed. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, um, you know, Hans Hans Heidewart Meyer was right. <laughs> Everybody is making rubbish today, but uh, let's let's see. Let's get let's get more serious. Um, let's go back to the to this uh, PDF here or the other one. So, so maybe uh, uh, simply the question. Uh, so you say, in fact, it can be any any kind of shape, or do you mean that it's more like uh, humanists are more are superior to grotesque to be to have a legible sensory? I'm not sure to understood what what you mean. Yeah, just just a second. It's um, yeah. Up, 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 up. Um, where's yeah? I think uh, I think this is basically true. <laughs> this is uh, this is the Helvetica, and uh, when the when the counters uh, when the when the when the apertures are small. Uh, yeah. you definitely run into trouble, and when the spacing is tight, you—it's the same story. So, so having this idea of the humanist sense with the, with the asymmetrical uh, counters here, instead of these these repeating things, um, I think that's that's for a sense sheriff. That is the best thing you uh, you you can do. Maybe you can open it up a little bit more here, uh, and the A and the E um, a bit more that, and then the S. It is, Maybe it can be a little bit, uh, maybe it is a little bit too thin. Uh, maybe it should be a little bit wider because syntax is a very condensed typeface. Um, and uh, I think he made one mistake. And um, in, when it comes to legibility, you'll see that these, these are the proportions of, of Garamond capitals here. And you have a wide O and you have a very narrow E. And when you look at Garamond's typefaces, you see that they, basically he did the same thing in the lowercase. So in the lowercase, you have a wide O and you have a narrow H and you have a narrow A. Um, and this kind of rhythm, which, which, which causes a little bit more distinguish, distinguishing uh, in proportions in the lowercase, uh, this is what he did not do in, in syntax. In syntax, it is Condensed, and I think this this is the one this is the this the thing that could be improved on syntax. Not only take the 
classical proportions from the capitals uh, from the from the Roman typeface, but also do this uh, this year. And then I think you, you that this is it, this is the the this, um, this is the design space for for the for a sans serif which is most legible. It's mm -hmm. that there that's that's the corner where it is. It is not very big. There's not not so many possibilities, but but that's that's about it. Uh, it's a little bit too tight here, maybe this G should be a little bit more open space here. Counter is a little bit too small, but it's a, it's yeah, it's just small small differences. But it depends. You know, but this is this is under when we, when we talk about bad reading conditions, when we talk about signage, when it, when when we talk about rainy weather and fog and people which which, which low vision, then these things uh, are important. But for for most of us who are sitting now here, I switch back to to all of you now, <laughs> and of the, the gallery uh, view, uh, you, you are all young, and you, ha you have uh, splendid eyesight. Huh? You are in the best years of your life. Thank you. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, better, better than we do. I, I need glasses, you know? Yeah, this is, uh, I can't do without them. <laughs> um, so it depends, it depends who is using the typeface. And signage is in the, in the public space is, of course, to be used by everyone. So there you have a, a very, very strict restrictions and less possibilities of, of things you can do. But when you're doing uh, literature uh, or, or magazines, that then you have thousands of possibilities of, of typefaces and uh, only, yeah, you, of course, uh, you have, there are issues with, uh, with people with low vision and whatever it is. But th nowadays they can read magazines on the iPad. And they can enlarge uh, the size uh, of the of the typeface to to be read, and they can and they can also adjust the contrast. They can have a very bright screen uh, to read on, much brighter than than paper. So a lot of things uh, are not are not just only in the typeface. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of compensate po possibilities to compensate for for these things nowadays. Mm -hmm. but, um, so it is the problem is not as big as it used to be. Yeah, yeah. so you can do anything you want today. Um, to <laughs> sometimes it, sometimes it, it's true. Sometimes you can do what you want because, yeah. you know, in, in graphic design, uh, uh, we, we, we do communication. So, uh, and, and in that sense, uh, David Carson was right that we should not confuse legibility with, with, with communication. Uh, yes, it, most of the time he is wrong. And he's an arrogant guy, but uh, and he's doing a lot of bullshit. But uh, but in this sense, he was right because uh, when the messages we design are not noticed, then there's uh, nobody nobody will ever get to the point of legibility because it is just not seen. So we have to stand out, and we, we can only stand out when we uh, when we break rules. That's the, that's, the, that's the idea. But when you do not break some kind of rule, you don't stand out because then you're like the others. So you have to do something which is a little bit unconventional. And, and that's all. Most of the time, it, this is a little bit against legibility. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's difficult to, to compromise. So, but, but it's different tasks. So the cover of the book can be very... Of a, or, or of a, when you do a campaign, the, 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 the posters outside can be very exciting and, and standing out and colorful and whatever it is, use thousands of side faces with swashes and 3D effects, whatever you want, all at the same time. But when it comes to, to, to reading uh, what it's about, then you have restrictions, of course. So, thank you. So, uh, so, thank you. Yeah. Uh, good explanation. Um,